Good evening, my fellow brothers and sisters. I'm grateful for the opportunity to be up here and to share the words of the Lord tonight. But first, let us all pray. Dear Lord, as we open your word tonight, please enlighten our minds and stir our hearts. Help us to understand the scriptures and may your Holy Spirit guide us as we study and deepen our faith in our quest to know you better. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So the title of my devotional tonight is called Why Kindness Matters. Now, have you ever spent time with someone who is always complaining and finding fault with any, in everything? Has anyone ever had that type of person with them? They're just always complaining? Now, imagine the kindest person you've ever met and think about the difference between them. What makes that person so kind? Well, the Bible has quite a lot to say about kindness. So let me explore some of the passages below. So what does the Bible say about kindness? So if we read Titus chapter 3, verses 4 to 7, it says, But when kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, He saved us, not because of righteous things we have done, but because of His mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by our Holy Spirit, whom He poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by His grace, we might become heirs to the hope of eternal life. In these verses, the Apostle Paul emphasizes the kindness and love of God towards humanity. And the kindness and love of God shows his compassion and love appear not because of our righteous deeds, but because of his mercy, which shows that God's grace is freely given and not earned. Our salvation is also a gift from God. It's not a result of our goodness, but a manifestation of his compassion and grace, which is made possible through Jesus Christ. The renewable by the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit renews us and transforms us, washing away our sins and granting us eternal life. These verses highlight God's kindness, mercy, and the transformative power of his love through Jesus. In another verse, Ephesians 2, verses 8 to 9, it says, For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. As you can see, these verses emphasize that salvation is a gift from God, received through faith and not by our own efforts or work. It is by God's grace alone that we are saved, and we cannot boast about our achievements in this regard. But what is grace? Grace refers to God's unmerited favor and love towards humanity. It is undeserved and freely given. So let's remember, our salvation is not based on our good works, but on God's grace, which is an expression of his kindness. Throughout the Bible, we are commanded and encouraged to be kind. So here are some passages that talk about that. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, it says, But the fruit of spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. This verse describes the qualities or attributes that are produced in a person's life when they are guided by the Holy Spirit. So let's break that down. First, we have love which is unconditional love for others. Second, we have joy, which is a deep sense of happiness and contentment. Third, there's peace, which is inner calm and tranquility. Fourth is forbearance, or also known as patience, which is the ability to endure difficulties without complaint. Fifth is kindness, which is treating others with compassion and generosity. Sixth is goodness, which is more excellent and loyalty. And seventh is faithfulness, which is loyalty and trustworthiness. Now these are all that the scripture says, but there is definitely more that could be said about these. And these virtues are considered evidence of a spirit-filled life and are meant to guide us as believers in our interactions with others. They reflect the character of God and help us grow in our relationship towards him. Now let's, re now let's read Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. It says, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. In this verse, the Apostle Paul encourages believers to show kindness, compassion, and forgiveness towards one another, emphasizing the importance of treating others with love and grace, reflecting the forgiveness we have received through Jesus Christ. But how can we practice kindness and compassion in our daily lives? 
Practicing kindness and compassion in our daily lives can have a profound impact. So here are some practical ways we can cultivate these qualities. Random acts of kindness, such as holding the door open, paying for someone's coffee, or just leaving a nice note. Actively listening to people shows that we're truly listening and shows empathy. Volunteering shows that we are offering our own time to help others. Forgiving and letting go of grudges practices forgiveness. Practicing self-compassion, being kind to ourselves, and small gestures such as smiling at strangers or sending a thoughtful message to a friend. It doesn't have to be anything crazy, but anything counts. And remember that kindness and compassion are contagious. So you can give it to one person and they'll spread it to even more. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 12, it says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. In this verse, the Apostle Paul encourages believers to embrace these virtues as part of their character. So just like the last verse, let me break, the, let me break down the components. First is compassion which is showing empathy and care for others. Second is kindness, treating others with goodness and generosity. Third is humility, which is having a modest and selfless attitude. Fourth is gentleness, which is exhibiting a gentle and considerate demeanor. And last but not least, patience, enduring difficulties with a calm and understanding spirit. By embodying these qualities, we reflect God's love and grace in our interaction with others. Even to our enemies, God reminds us in Luke chapter 6, verses 35 to 36, but love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. These reasons for this is that God himself is kind, even to those who are ungrateful and wicked. Now that we have explored what the Bible says about kindness, let's consider some steps to help us practice kindness in our lives. First, we can take time to reflect on God's kindness in our lives. If you want to, reread the passages we discussed earlier, which would be Titus chapter 4, verses 3 to 6, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 7 to 9, and Luke chapter 6, verses 35 to 46. Second, Examine your interactions with people and ask yourself this question. In what ways have I been kind to others? And in what ways have I been unkind? And improve on those by asking God's Spirit to show you areas in your life you need to improve on being kind to others. Ask Him to help you overcome those areas. Fourth, we could list out possible ways that you may be kind to others and then set some goal on who you might reach out to. And fifth, which is last but not least, pray and ask God to show his kindness to you every day. May the Lord be with us as we seek to help to be kind with others. And before I close, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the wisdom and guidance. May the truth we have learned today shape our thoughts, actions, and relationships. Grant us the strength to apply these teachings in our daily lives and help us to grow and be closer to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen.